Hi guys, this is the third day with my motorbike in my garage and today I want to replace uh, my original uh, EXO system because in the last uh, technical um, approval, proofing, checking, whatever exam uh, here in Germany they call it TÜV <laughs> so on the last TÜV the judge said I am on a kind of edge of the limits by some kind of pollution or uh, sound pressure level or whatever. Me, you think this is an easy job, so you can order any kind of aftermarket uh, exosystem and install on your bike and that's it. But here in Germany, it's a big eh, 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 <laughs> big no, 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 no. One option, of course, order the original one and, uh, and drop on your bike and that's it, you are done. It's about 700 euro. <laughs> you get it, 700 euro. The other option, with the aftermarket exosystems, um, this is a bit more complicated because you have to prove, of course, uh, the origin of uh, the exosystem and you have to show a lot of documentation, a kind of EU norm um, uh, card. But this is not only a one way system, so. You see this uh, identification number here? This is ME060, and uh, the other one is the um, homologation number. I don't know what is this. So the inspector, uh, on a technical checking, he will type in these uh, identification numbers into his uh, computer, and then he will check in the database if the exosystem is listed and the exosystem is the same and everything, all the construction and all the identification numbers and whatever, all the parts, it's the same like uh, what is on the bike. Few of my friends, that, of course, they run into this issue, so they get some kind of uh, paper with the exosystems, but unfortunately, they uh, numbers it turned out uh, some kind of fake identification card. With this MIVV beautiful uh, motorbike EXO system, you cannot run into this problem. This is a proper EXO system for this specific bike and this is the big deal about this brand. It's running around uh, 370 something something euro, but I got it much more cheaper in a Louis.da um, shop, local shop here in Berlin. Ah, ha, ha. Oh, that's hot. That's hot. <laughs> but again, compare this price to the original price from the Suzuki, which is 700 euro. I think this is a really uh, great and really nice option. Uh, let's have a look uh, a bit closer. As you can see, I ordered this really beautiful carbon version. I really like uh, the surface and I think this is not a fake carbon and uh, it, it, it's really, oh my God, this is really tough uh, pipe. And I don't think so, this is only an um, outside uh, cover. This is a really light uh, uh, muffler, but all the other parts, it's made from titanium and uh, chrome steel or um, whatnot. Let's have a look at uh, the quality of the machining. <laughs> look at this. <laughs> uh, it looks to me really precise uh, CNC machined uh, parts. And, uh, and uh, it is a really nice, uh, uh, engraving with the day logo. Huh? The inside is a perforated uh, uh, pipe. Uh, you cannot see by the camera, but I can see with a really fine uh, mesh behind this perforated uh, pipe. And I'm really, really interested on the sound of this uh, exosystem, of course. <laughs> of course, with and without uh, the DB eater uh, pipe section here on, on the end. The connector pipe, it's a simple pipe for on the first look, but if you take a closer look, you can see there is a lot of uh, magic going on with this pipe. So the diameter from here until here, it's bigger than the rest of the pipe. Meanwhile, on the other end, 
this section until here it's smaller than this one. I'm 100% sure that producing this uh, uh, specific pipe for this specific bike with this uh, crazy high pressure um, forming uh, uh, tool. Uh, the quality of the welding, I think it can be better. I'm 100% sure the guy is using some sorts of uh, uh, pulls uh, TIG welding technique and I see a few issues with the welding for example maybe you can see here mm, I'm not sure or oh, not on this one ah on this one yeah so he did a really big undercut on a beginning of his uh, welding work so I'm 100% sure he's not watching enough uh, weld.com YouTube videos eh? <laughs> okay let's talk about Let's talk about post flow for just a second. There's so much gas blowing out of here, I can hear it echoing through my brain cavity. Now that's some serious gas flow. Nice! I really like this channel. I learned a lot uh, from this uh, Bob Muffet uh, old guy, how to do uh, proper welding with the TIG and with MIG and with uh, arc welding. It's just amazing uh, YouTube channel, check uh, him out. Other parts for uh, the installation. This package of uh, the mounting uh, parts, it's made exactly for this bike. So this is not a universal uh, exosystem, you know, you can understand. This is how this uh, special card is looks uh, like. I hope you can see everything on it. Okay, and what else in the, um, in the box? Of course, I got uh, some stickers. So if you wanna get um, a few nice uh, stickers from MIVV uh, Exosystem, just uh, leave the comment and then I will shoot somebody. And I think I will replace the original uh, gaskets because uh, these inspectors, they have a really sensitive instruments to measure these really weird gases in uh, your exos gas. For this job, I will apply also this copper, um, <laughs> uh, for the pipe connections and I have other one which is a form a uh, silicon whatever can go up to 315 uh, degree and we need internet for this exosystem <laughs> I'm not joking <laughs> because on the end of this process I have to register my uh, exosystem to get uh, the warranty uh, covering. Eh? And I find uh, this uh, mm, polyer pasta <laughs> in a Bauhaus. And I never saw this uh, brand, but it looks to me really decent and really high quality, at least uh, by the package. Eh? Let me open, then we will see what we have inside. Oh, it's, it's a lot. By smell. It's uh, total neutral, no smell at all. Hmm. <laughs> okay, I think uh, this will work. Eight euro, something like this, and I hope this will do a really nice job. And uh, what else we need? Uh, a really special uh, tool set for this kind of works. <laughs> uh, original homemade Hungarian sausage. Eh? <laughs> and, uh, let me check. Oh my god. Oh guys, really special tool. <laughs> Let's jump to the work. For a normal installation you just have to undo this part from your XO system and of course the other screw which is holding the, the muffler itself. You know guys I wanna clean up uh, these uh, surfaces. So uh, for that of course I have to remove the, the muffler I have to undo this uh, connection over there and then I have to remove uh, the pipes uh, from the cylinder head. Yeah? Exhaust uh, screws and high temperature and rust, you know, eh, fingers crossed. Yeah. Of course I picked the wrong size. Yeah? <laughs> I think it's easy. What I picked up? Ah. I will not remove fully this bolt and the reason for that of course I have to play uh, with the junction point over there. And the next step is to release this uh, screw here. Uh, 
Uh, I just sprayed uh, some MIDI 40 into my mic, eh? <laughs> oh! MIDI 40 is working. Okay, more MIDI 40. Uh, but not into the mic, eh? Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. Yeah, she is coming. And now I can understand why this uh, inspector, he said, I'm gonna limit off uh, some gas something something. 10 year of uh, usage and 10 year in uh, rain, washing, you know, uh, all those things. And now you can understand <laughs> how serious they are <laughs> about uh, this topic and what they can measure with their uh, really special, really sensitive instruments. Unbelievable. Look at him. <laughs> He's huge. Ooh, I don't want to go under my bike now. Okay, now I have to remove this uh, groove pipe and for that I have to release uh, those guys uh, from the um, cylinder head and oh my god, you know, it's, uh, this is always a problematic because they're made uh, from steel but the cylinder head is aluminum something something and here there is a really high temperature and, and corrosion or what's not. So I hope I can uh, undo these uh, bolts. As I was said, contact! Oh my god! Jesus! You know what? Really for it. And I have eight pieces from that. Now I think I have to wait a bit. Hmm, like uh, five or ten minutes. So, sausage time! <laughs> I don't know who invented the VD40 in the United States in 1953, but his name must be in the Bible as a saint. Huh? Voila, five minutes, <laughs> just one piece of sausage, and, and it just came off. Such an amazing chemical. It's, I'm telling you guys, this is pure magic. You know what, this is not pure magic. I know, it's, it's pure petroleum, 90, 99%, something like this. But it was a so great idea to sell petroleum to the people. So now I can work on it a bit to, to polish up and clean it up and have a look inside uh, the ports and what's going on. Now I'm just cleaning the boards. Mm. Let me show you the old uh, gaskets. Mm. This is how they looks like and there is some kind of magic behind this uh, technology. So, uh, how it's working? Maybe you can see the new one. It's only four and a half millimeter and the old one, the used one, it's about six millimeter. I think this uh, hundreds of uh, layer between the two copper by the time they are expanding because of the heat and uh, the other gases or whatever. So it's working exactly opposite like uh, what the other type of gaskets are doing. So this is a U-shape uh, coppering and this is what is inside and you can see this money, 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 small wire or mesh or layers and hundreds of hundreds of hundreds of them. This is how the exhaust gaskets are made. <laughs> really interesting. Now I want to do some kind of uh, scientific test with the different uh, solutions. Uh, this one, it's a um, normal gasoline, nothing fancy, German one, you know. With the weirdo <laughs> substance inside. <laughs> then I have here a clean uh, nitro uh, diluter, or how it's called in English. <laughs> the next one, of course, will be <laughs> VD40. And the last one I will clean uh, as dry. So, the gasoline on this, yeah, not so much. So this is a nitro. Next one is VD40. Yep. 
And the last one I left as is. So now I will wait a bit. Benzene or gasoline. So this is uh, after the gasoline. Oh, maybe you can see, but the nitro removed uh, much more compared uh, to the gasoline. So this is the gasoline and this is the nitro. And let's see <laughs> the, the magic substance, the VD40. So this is the VD40. Uh -huh. Something different happened with the VD40. Let me show you. So the gasoline is removed only this black carbon something something and the nitro also. Sorry, this is the nitro. But the VD40, maybe you can see, huh? the VD40 is removed not only this carbon, but also the rust. This is this brown uh, uh, section here. And the last one is the paper just alone without any kind of chemical. Yeah, so <laughs> the worst is the gasoline. <laughs> it's really interesting, but the dry paper removed more from this black uh, goo. <laughs> uh, I think I will choose the dry uh, cleaning. By the way, it's absolutely not normal if you see black inside here, this uh, carbon whatever. I'm 100% sure this black I did uh, with the pilot screw adjustment. And now I just want to run around the with this uh, really nice, uh, really tough uh, polish air brush or what is this, around this edge here, because this is the part what is going inside into the cylinder head. Now what I will do, this is the flat surface which is uh, pressing this gasket into the cylinder head. So I want to make sure this surface is uh, flat and uh, clean from any kind of oxidation or whatever. Just like this. Just few turn, not so much. And then I think you know it's you now I feel here something. Yeah, there is something. Nice, beautiful, and really smooth and and flat. Now the next one. Nice, very really nice. Now is the time to try out this uh, polyer paste from Mellerud. Huh? <laughs> Eight euro. I will clean down the surface a bit with this really nice uh, nitro because the nitro it's um, not so oily and it will. Uh, disappear immediately, but it can remove a uh, uh, few really nasty bitumen and whatnot you see here. I hope you can see here from the street and uh, it will help uh, this uh, polyer paste to go deeply inside into the chrome layer. And I hope, yeah, you see? So this is what a nitro can do. Uh -huh. It's almost gone. Eh, you know, eh, 14 year old uh, exhaust pipe, so don't expect <laughs> too much. So this surface here, it looks to me already oxidated. Uh, this one is like 20% um, oxidation and more uh, dirt and dust and uh, some some other, uh, who knows what, <laughs> burned into this uh, pipe. So let me take a bit uh, from this uh, polyer paste. Für Edestal, Chrom und Aluminium. Huh? Not aluminum, <laughs> like in the States. Aluminium. This you guys have to learn it, huh? So, yeah, this looks nice. Is it blue? Let me do a bit of uh, work here with this uh, spatial chemical. Yeah, I think first time this will turn to black. Yeah, you see, now it's black. 
Yeah, it's definitely did something. Look at this. <laughs> it's working. This is really ugly, really nasty. I think uh, this is a good uh, result on a rust. Before the installation, you also have to remove uh, this gasket from here. This is a kind of same solution like what we have here. Contact! <laughs> Damaged and really ugly, really nasty. And this is the new one, what you have to drop in inside. But before this, of course, I will uh, clean out uh, the surface here fully. I think I have to use some harder tool here. Yeah, now it's coming really, really nicely. Mm -hmm. Now it looks much more cleaner. Maybe I still have some something, something, something here. I hope you can see, but I'm not sure this is uh, uh, oxidation or some sort of uh, uh, form A um, silicon paste from the factory. So I don't want to remove this. Instead of uh, removing, I will apply now uh, copper uh, paste. Uh -huh. Now if I, yeah, it's going really nicely. Until, uh -huh. uh, kind of. But it's slowly, slowly it's going in. Very important thing. When you install these new gaskets for the exhaust pipe, you see these tiny things here? So this must to go inside into the hole and uh, you have to align this gasket on a vertical uh, line. So be careful with this because otherwise you cannot push in this ring at all or you can but then you will damage the, the ring itself. I almost damaged my one because I forgot this <laughs> trick which is really clearly mentioned in the service manual. Oh la la, I arrived to the point when I have to drop the extender pipe to the original exos uh, system but this will be a bit tricky. This must be perfectly aligned to this one. Hmm, <laughs> I know it. <laughs> because now I don't have enough space here to, or oh, maybe I have. Yeah, it's, it's really tricky. It's not good on middle standard. Okay, this is the issue here, like this, with a piece of wood. And now, Looks to me it's only out with uh, eight millimeter or so, so, so now I will knock the other end with this uh, nice German uh, <laughs> flecken, schmecken, <laughs> hammer, whatever. So this end is uh, rubber and this end is um, plastic. Yeah? So I will use the rubber one, of course. Yeah, it's going. Uh, still missing like five millimeter or so. Some of my original pipes are not so aligned well with this uh, fixer position. So I have to turn the pipe a bit like clockwise. And on the same time, I have to push it down. And now something is wrong here. Let me show you what kind of tricks I did to make sure uh, the whole pipe system is aligned well with my old uh, original um, exhaust pipe system. And on this end, I dropped the rope around it. And on this way, I controlled the height of the pipe from the other side. Then I pushed in this uh, pin to align uh, the hole with the screw. So now the screw is in. It was really tricky and really hard. 
<laughs> now I can demolish this uh, wood construction. <laughs> oh, I hate this. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, look at this. <laughs> of course they don't want to do in a factory, eh? <laughs> Ah, look at this. I have some mis mismatching. Uh, I think I will spend more time <laughs> with this than with the whole Excel system. <laughs> Approximately 10 hours later. Yeah. <laughs> so this will came to the outside. This is the spacer, bolt, and uh, this uh, rubber pipe. Uh, uh, uh. How? L listen the sound of this precision. <laughs> My old uh, Hungarian friend <laughs> is here, Uncle Juriba, and he is doing now some really nice uh, Hungarian food in my garden. Of course I will show you guys, eh? <laughs> so let me show you what I'm playing now, which kind of game. The end of the muffler must be parallel with the bike, but as you tighten up uh, this um, rubber um, holder here, the whole muffler is turning like this. So I had to pre-calculate this error. Let me show you what I'm talking about. This is the line of the muffler here, and this is what I want to run parallelly with the bike, so. But I faced with other kind of issue here now. Um, maybe you can see like this. It's absolutely touching this um, metal rubber band here. So I think I have to bend this a bit out because I'm 100% I'm sure this will make some kind of ugly um, knock, knock, knock uh, noises. So let me bring here a proper tool. Just a bit, like this, okay. Nice. I have to play with this uh, spring. <laughs> Here is the trick, this is a simple glass cleaner. Uh, uh, look at this. Yeah, finally. I'm not done because I have to drop this rubber feet into here because this is the uh, bumper for the middle stand and here it is <laughs> of course you wanna hear the sound of this uh, <laughs> exo system but for that I have to do other video eh? because I have some kind of idea how I can show you guys properly the sound of this uh, really beautiful sport uh, Exo system from MIVV. Huh? I hope you guys enjoyed. See you next time. Bye. Okay, just for a fun, I will start the engine without the board computer. Huh? <laughs> Look at this. Oh my god. Mm. Now this is the kind of food that you will never get in a McDonald's, eh? Tötet Kapusta. Look at this, almost one inch. Eh? So 25 millimeter after the smoking and drying process. So let me show you in inches. <laughs> almost one inch. Okay, and the taste of this uh, sausage is 355%. Huh? <laughs>